Well, hello there, and welcome back to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kieran Mack, as always, and delighted you've been able to tune in with us yet again for another show. Now, before I do jump into the top five stories doing the rounds in Thailand here today, don't forget to give this video an all like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so YouTube will let you know when the next Thai Expat Daily Show is uploaded onto YouTube. Now, if you like listening to us on a podcast player, there's a link down below in the description where you'll find all the available podcasts podcast players where the Thai Expat Daily Show can be found. And finally, if you'd like to support the show, if you want to buy me a coffee, if you just like the show and you want to do something for the show, you can do so by buying us a coffee down in the link below in the description. So before we also jump into the top stories, a little bit of channel news. So starting next week, along with the shows that we do and the new shows that we bring you we're also going to be doing a couple of live shows during the week where we'll discuss the comment section go through people's comments answer some questions that may appear in it and kind of do a little bit of that during the week and that will be basically on the days that we have a show and i'll also post a link on the channel so you'll see when these shows uh, live shows come up the live stream and secondly we're going to also announcing and in conjunction with youtube we'll be starting a channel membership uh, which will be coming Coming up in the next couple of weeks. It's just a monthly thing where you'll be able to uh, get some perks for listening to the show and it'll also be quite handy on the live stream as well which will be going out but there'll be more information on that as we come up with that and get it all sorted but now that that's all done and dusted let's jump into the top stories i'm going to start off with a little bit of good news today because it always needs to be a good news story somewhere because the news can be so depressing sometimes but nevertheless let's talk about the ailing elephant jumbo has been repatriated from sri lanka Saxarin, one of three elephants that Thailand gifted to Sri Lanka, returned home safely as he arrived in Chiang Mai on Sunday after 22 years away. The elephant was kept in a cage that fits into the cargo hold of the Aleutian IL-76 plane that flew her back. The air crew were joined by four veterinarians and two mahouts who had been sent to Sri Lanka earlier. The IL-76 took off from Bandanakai International Airport in the capital of Colombo at 7.30am on Sunday, with Saxarin reported to be calm throughout the trip. The plane landed at Chiang Mai Airport at 2.03pm after a five-hour flight. The veterinarians performed a health check on the elephant upon arrival and his condition was reported to be normal. After the landing, Environment and Natural Resource Minister Varawad Sil Prarasha said Saxarin was being transported by trailer car to the Thai Elephant Conservation Centre, that's the TECC in Lampang, which is an hour and a half's drive from Chiang Mai. The elephant will receive at least a month's intensive care before being allowed to mingle with other elephants. Now, according to the plan, Saxarin will be quarantined within a special area for 30 days where he will also receive extra medical care before the next stage of his reintroduction to Thailand. The Minister of Natural Resources and Environment is live streaming events on its Facebook page to keep the public updated on the elephant's progress, said Mr. Vara Wood. Since Saxarin was gifted to Sri Lanka in 2001 as a goodwill ambassador for the country, the elephant has changed hands multiple times before ending up in Algotam Ganda Vaharaja, in the south of the country, where it was a carrier of holy relics during annual Buddhist parades. However, heads were turned after it was revealed that his limbs had been restrained with chains, which caused injuries all over his body, said Rally for Animal Rights and Environment, a Sri Lanka-based animal protection organization. It insisted that the Thai government bring the elephant back for treatment and sanctuary. The government had planned the repatriation for six months with cooperation from both governments and the Royal Thai Embassy in Colombo. At least 19.5 million baht of the budget reserved for emergencies was spent on the elephant's repatriation operation. So just a little bit of good news. It's nice to see that the Thai government took responsibility for this animal that it had donated many years ago to the Sri Lankan government, which in essence had been keeping the animal in very, very poor conditions. And I think when an animal is gifted, and especially when it was gifted by the king of Thailand to Sri Lanka, it should be better looked after. And certainly what a lot of reports said it was being used for logging in the local temple and things like this. And I'm certain I'm certainly sure that the former king, the late king, certainly did not have that intent that this elephant would be doing such work. So it is good to see that the government got their act together. It is good to see that they brought the elephant back and the elephant will have a chance to enjoy the rest of its life. Now, what about other elephants that are out there? Well, apparently the government here in Thailand has instructed all embassies and obviously they have a list of all these 
elephants that have been gifted to certain governments around the world to go check on these elephants to ensure that they are being treated properly and that they're in good health. So hopefully the rest of these elephants are being kept in good health. It is very sad to think that they just can't be left alone and just, you know, enjoy their natural habitat. But nevertheless, this is somewhat of a good story. But of course, we'll keep you updated if there's anything else in it. Now, in relation to the government finally a bit of kind of news that is moving along and seems like things are moving along but there obviously is going to be very very big votes next week so that'll be the pinnacle of it all but nevertheless Pratcharat party leader automatically selected house speaker Pratcharat party leader Wan Mohammed Noor Mata, 79 years of age was selected as the new house speaker this morning his candidacy was uncontested after move forward party Pita Limjanarat nominated him According to selection procedures, when only one candidate is nominated, he or she is automatically selected. Wan Muhammad's selection, which is yet to be endorsed by His Majesty the King in the form of a royal command, will pave the way for the House Speaker in his capacity as the President of the Parliament to call a joint session of the House and Senate to elect a new Prime Minister. After his selection this morning, Wan Muhammad, in his brief vision speech to MPs, vowed to perform his duties with impartiality, honesty and transparency in compliance with the constitution laws and parliamentary regulations. He also vowed to adhere to His Majesty the King's advice given yesterday when he presided over the official opening of the Parliament session following the May 14th general election. Wan Muhammad said he will consult with his two deputies on guidelines for their performance of legislative duties to enable all MPs to do their jobs to their utmost capability in the public interest. He also promised to attach importance to all House committees in their duties to address public grievances in improving their livelihoods and in promoting relations and cooperation with the parliaments of other countries. The House Speaker-elect said that he will support and promote Parliament TV and radio stations as the mouthpieces of the people in the promotion of democracy and will improve the efficiency of the King Prachapa Pox Institute of the Promotion of Legislative Affairs. Now, further on this afternoon, two deputies were selected, one from the Puatai Party, who was uncontested, and one from the Buford Party, who had to run off against... Uh, Somebody nominated by the opposition, but he won 312 to 108 votes, I think. Um, interestingly enough that they put up somebody against the Move Forward Party candidate, which kind of shows you where we're going on this. Uh, in relation to that vote, nobody from the other side crossed over to vote for the Move Forward Party candidate. So, you know, kind of shows you where we're going to be seeing. I am wondering exactly where the Move Forward Party are going to be getting the votes to get Peter in because I just can't see it at this stage. Now, on another bit of information, something I have found and noticed on Twitter was um, a post by uh, a person who works for, I think it's Amnesty International here in Thailand or Human Rights Watch, one of those organizations, was a police memo that's circulating within Bangkok at the moment telling the police, the Bangkok police, to prepare for riots and to prepare detention centers for protesters in the event that Peter Limjanarat is not elected as prime minister of this country now i would be shockingly surprised if he can get what he needs basically 55 60 votes from the parliament uh, and which will be from the senate he'll need those votes and i just can't see him getting them i would be shocked if they did and one of the things i did read is that the uh, the house speaker can nominate peter many times it doesn't have to be one time he can nominate him five six seven times but of course if you're going to keep getting the same outcome now, i'm wondering who exactly would the senate vote for if they withdrew peter from that but there seems to be plans afoot and what would happen if uh, peter doesn't get in i am concerned about this country and moving forward i'm concerned that another coup street protest like we saw in 2020 will definitely do this country a lot of damage uh, just when it's recovering after the COVID-19 pandemic, where we've had three years of basically the country being closed and businesses on the brink of bankruptcy. And I, I do hope, I, I, I nearly would pray that the Senate decide that we need to vote for Peter Limjanarat to get him in so that we can start to see this country progress. Of course, they won't. I don't believe they will, but it's always a pipe dream out there. But we're going to move along. So AI cams to help clear zebra crossing. I always get worried when I hear things like AI cams. 20 spots in Bangkok ready to keep motorists behind the line as pedestrians cross. 
As soon as the vehicle stops at a traffic light at Wang Soang intersection, a loud alarm goes off, followed by a pre-recorded announcement in Thai saying, please don't obstruct the zebra crossing, thank you. The alarm and announcement will keep playing until all motorists who are waiting for the red line to turn green move their vehicles from the pedestrian crossing. This is an artificial intelligence in action, which City Hall is marshalling to a civic cause. In an effort to improve pedestrian safety across the capital, City Hall has installed several cameras fitted with sensors at two major traffic junctions in Bangkok, the Wang Soang and the Aran Amarin intersections. Not only will the cameras act as a deterrent, they will also take a picture of both the offence and the offender's image, says the director of the Traffic Technology Systems Division at the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration. The alarm and the warning announcement are loud enough to embarrass offending motorists, he said, expressing his confidence the AI-assisted cameras will be able to reduce traffic violations. That said, the pictures will only serve as a warning for the time being, as authorities have no plan to prosecute offenders caught by the AI-assisted camera during the trial period, he said. Those who intentionally run a red light, however, will be prosecuted if they are caught by the cameras. Authorities decided to deploy the cameras to stop motorcyclists and cars from obstructing zebra crossing for the benefit of the capital's pedestrians. Such violations remain rampant across the city despite the rules in place against such an offence. Initiated by the previous bank Governor Aswin Kwan Muang. This project was finally implemented after Governor Chachart City Punt signed a 106 million baht contract with Samar Comtech Co. on August 31st last year, hiring the company to install AI assisted cameras at 20 major crossings in, in the city, said Mr. Rapi Pong. 18 more locations will be fitted with such cameras and that will be rolled out in the coming six months. It takes roughly about two months to install cameras at each location as the cameras must be placed high enough so they can capture a bird's eye view. The system will be further developed so that all the data from the cameras can be used to control the traffic lights below, he noted. So we're going to be using AI in Bangkok to try stop people running over zebra crossing. But there's no fine and no penalty for doing it so I'm not quite sure people will be shamed into moving their car back it just doesn't seem I think part of the problem with these pedestrian crossings and zebra crossing people just don't stop and they just don't care about it today myself I was driving through town and uh, there was a zebra crossing and I saw a couple I went across and I stopped my car but I mean I stopped my car but I was in like three lane of traffic and the two lanes outside of me all kept going straight they never bothered to stop so by stopping was I causing more potential danger to that couple who were trying to cross I think I actually was I was nearly giving them a false sense of security in some ways but I I, I know a lot of people feel that too when they do stop that they're thinking well the other cars aren't going to stop so am I going to actually cause an accident I do hope these things get sorted out. I, I, I think steep fines is the way to start to get people to follow the law in relation to zebra crossing to this country. If you don't hit them in the pocket, they'll do nothing. Simply having an AI technology when there's no fine attached to it and no deduction of points from your license is complete and utter nonsense. It's not going to deter people from stopping or from not stopping. It's just going to have them continuing the same behavior because there's nothing to correct that bad behavior, if you know what I mean. But I'd love to know your opinion about it down below. Do you think they're a good idea? Do you think they're a bad idea? Do you think they'll change driver behavior? I'd love to know your opinion, as always, down below in that comment section. Now to Phuket. Van driver charged for threatening tourist. The passenger van driver wanted for intimidating and verbally abusing a tourist in Phuket town yesterday has presented himself to Phuket City Police and has been charged with frightening others by use of threat. The driver, Poramet Soraket, 47 years of age, presented himself at the Phuket City Police Station at about 2pm, confirmed the Phuket City Police Colonel Pratung Palmana. Poramet was wanted by police after a video was posted online showing him verbally abusing a tourist, later identified as 35-year-old Singaporean national Fariz bin Abdulatir Bashir Alil on the footpath in front of the coffee talk shop on Ratsada Road in Phuket Town yesterday. Bystanders and people who saw the video online believed that Poramet was brandishing an iron bar while he was verbally abusing the tourist. Colonel Pratung today told reporters that the police had questioned Poramet about the item he had in his hand. We asked him whether the weapon he had was like an iron bar or a water pipe. He said that the thing was like a small rubber band, presumably a rubber belt. If you try to compare them to the picture in the clip, they look similar, the colonel said. Colonel Pratung did not clarify why Poramet had the rubber belt in his hand while he was verbally accosting the tourist. 
Regarding the incident, the colonel explained that Paramet worked for a company based in Krabi that provided non-scheduled van trips between Phuket and Krabi. The issue began after Paramet had removed Mr. Fariz's luggage from the back of the van and sat it down heavily. Mr. Fariz commented on how heavily his suitcase were unloaded. Paramet became angry when Mr. Fariz commented and took a photo of Paramet, he added. The driver was dissatisfied that the passenger took his photograph and there was a raised hand to express dissatisfaction. That's all, Carlo Pratung said. The colonel emphasized that the charge against Paramet was one of threatening a person. It was not a violent crime. He even praised Paramet, the van driver, for not making the incident worse. Thanks to the driver of this van, there was no assault. He did not cause further escalation. When contacted to come to be questioned about the incident today, the driver came to see me and asked about where to go. Today, the accused will be presented in court on the charge of using a threat to frighten others, which is a district court offence. In accordance with the policy of the commander of the Region 8 Police and the commander of Phuket City Police, in all cases of this kind of crime, we will not issue any fines at the police station. We must submit our case to the court. We must have a court order. Whether to impose a fine or sentence, any imprisonment is at the discretion of the court. We have measures that must be taken every time, the colonel went on to say. The van driver Pormet said that the luggage was heavy. He apologised for the incident, but today the two sides did not meet, Colonel Pratung said. Colonel Pratung made no mention of whether Pormet's version of the incident matched the description of events given by the tourist. Of note, by police instruction, reporters today were not permitted to take any photographs of Pormet while he was at the police station. Very, very strange incident altogether. I mean, the, the police colonel was praising the guy that basically was the one with the threatening behaviour. Only in Phuket would that kind of thing happen. Only in Phuket. Well, we'll move on because taxi drivers and minibus drivers are, I mean, I, I could go on for hours about them, but I'm not going to. Now, as we know, Phuket failed in its attempt to get the uh, expo, the special expo for 2028. And there will be repercussions, I guess, for Phuket. So failed expo bid threatens to slow down Phuket tunnels and the light rail. And the light rail, that's an interesting one that's meant to be finished in two years, but hasn't even started. The construction of Patong Tunnel and implementation of other crucial infrastructure projects in Phuket might occur later than desired by provincial authorities after Phuket has lost its bid to host the specialized expo 2027-28. Governor Narong Wunsi has admitted. According to the governor, Phuket's bid for the expo was strong, showcasing the province's potential. However, it was ultimately unsuccessful, which may result in a delay in the implementation of infrastructure projects that could have been expedited for completion by 2028, the schedule year for the expo. Since Phuket was not chosen for the expo, the execution of these infrastructure improvements may not happen as quickly as we had hoped, Governor Narong stated. And this was as quoted by the Bangkok Post, actually. Now, the Bangkok Post explains that he, Governor Narong, noted that Phuket would have executed its planned projects such as a cross-province highway, a light rail system, tunnels and a water supply system if the city had been chosen for the Specialized Expo 2028. It is understood from the previous announcement by the Royal Thai Government and the Phuket Provincial Government that the critical infrastructure projects will be executed anyway, though not necessarily expedited to be finished by 2028. So because they didn't get the Phuket Expo 2028, all these projects, things you'd expect for the world-class destination, by the way. Phuket is often touted as a world-class destination. You hear it from the governor, from the government. You hear it from every guy from Tat who pops out. World-class destination that still, at this moment in time, does not have a cross-province highway, a light rail systems, and tunnels and a water supply system. This is the world-class destination they keep going on about. And now we're going to have to delay getting these basic items that you would find in any world-class destination for maybe another five years after 2028 because they have no need to be urgent about this anymore. So they'll put it on the thing. They'll continue to take taxes from people and they'll just continue to go the way they're going in terms of cash. Phuket is a very, very nice island. It's very pretty. But there is an issue with Phuket that there has never been any proper sustainable planning for the island in terms of how buildings are built, how hotels are built, how water supply is, is constructed, uh, how people get from A to B. 
parking and many many issues that seem to be just go unresolved in the island now i guess many people had hoped with if they had got the phuket expo some of these things would have been addressed and fixed but we can see now that certainly will not be the case i also think that the move forward party's idea to have an elected governor for the likes of phuket is a very good idea it'll put these guys under pressure to get things done otherwise they're going to get voted out at the next election these governors that are basically chosen by the government and then sent down to do a job and then they're all moved around just circulated from one province to the province other province i don't believe have the good of phuket or any other province in their heart unless they're legitimately from there i think they're just there to do a job and to bleed the tr place dry in fairness but nevertheless that is it for today hope you enjoyed today's show don't forget if there's anything you want to talk about down in the comment section please feel free to do so and failing all that we'll see you in the next couple of days have a great day and and do stay safe but ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kieran Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show, and we will see you next time.